Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the children of the east. He looked, and behold, a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying there by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. The stone on the well's mouth was great. There all the flocks were gathered. They rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again on the well's mouth in his place. Jacob said to them, My relatives, where are you from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. See, Rachel his daughter is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is still the middle of the day, not time to gather the cattle together. What are the sheep, and go and feed them? They said, We can't until all the flocks are gathered together, and they rolled a stone from the well's mouth. Then we watered the sheep. While he was yet speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. It happened when Jacob saw Rachel the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban his mother's brother, that Jacob went near, and rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the flock of Laban his mother's brother. Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son. She ran and told her father. It happened when Laban heard the news of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet Jacob, and embraced him and kissed him, and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things. Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. He lived with him for a month. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my brother, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what will your wages be? Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. Jacob served seven years for Rachel. They seemed to him but a few days for the love he had for her. Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. It happened in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him. He went in to her. Laban gave Zilpah his handmaid to his daughter Leah for a handmaid. It happened in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. He said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Didn't I serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not done so in our place to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill the week of this one, and we will give you the other also for the service with which you will serve me yet another seven years. Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. He gave him Rachel his daughter his wife. Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her handmaid. He went in also to Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet another seven years. The Lord saw that Leah was hated, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son, and she named him Reuben. For she said, Because the Lord has looked at my affliction, for now my husband will love me. She conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am hated, he has therefore given me this son also. She named him Simeon. She conceived again and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined to me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. She conceived again and bare a son. She said, This time will I praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the sky and came and rolled away the stone from the door and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. 
For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The angel answered the woman, Don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just like he said. Come, see the place where the Lord was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. They departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! They came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers that they should go into Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city, and told the chief priest all the things that had happened. When they were assembled together with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave a large amount of silver to the soldiers, saying, Say that his disciples came by night, and stole him away while we slept. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and make you free of worry. So they took the money and did as they were told. The saying was spread abroad among the Jews and continues until this day. But the eleven disciples went into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had sent them. When they saw him, they bowed down to him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things which I commanded you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Chapter 5 Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal clothing and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house, and the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house over against the entrance of the house. It happened when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then the king said to her, What do you want, Queen Esther, and what is your request? It shall be given you even to the half of the kingdom. Esther said, If it seems good to the king, let the king and Haman come this day to the banquet that I prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste that it may be done as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. The king said to Esther at the banquet of wine, What is your petition? And it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther, and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition, and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do to-morrow as the king has said. Then when Haman forth that day joyful and glad of heart, but when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he didn't stand up nor move for him, he was filled with wrath against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself and went home, and he sent and fetched his friends and Zeresh his wife. Haman recounted to them the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and all the things in which the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, Yes, Esther the queen, let no man come in with the king to the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and to-morrow also I am invited by her together with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh's wife and all his friends to him, Let a gallows be made fifty cubits high, and in the morning speak to the king that Mordecai may be hanged on it. Then you go in merrily with the king to the banquet. The thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made.
When we had escaped, then we knew that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us no common kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us all, because of the present rain and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said one to another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped from the sea, yet justice has not allowed to live. However, he shook off the creature into the fire and was unharmed. But they expected that he would have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But when they were long in expectation and saw nothing bad happen to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island, named Publius, who received us and courteously entertained us three days. It was so that the father of Publius lay sick of fever and dysentery. Paul entered into him, prayed, and laying his hand on him, healed him. Then, when this was done, the rest also that had diseases in the island came and were cured. They also honored us with many honors, and when we sailed, they put on board the things that we needed. After three months we set sail in a ship of Alexandria which had wintered in the island, whose sign was the Twin Brothers. Touching at Syracuse, we stayed there three days. From there we circled around and arrived at Regium. After one day a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came back to Patoli, where we found brothers, and were entreated to stay with them seven days. So we came to Rome. From there the brothers, when they heard of us, came to meet us as far as the market of Appius and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw he thanked God and took courage. When we entered into Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. It happened that after three days Paul called together those who were the leaders of the Jews. When they had come together, he said to them, I, brothers, though I had done nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, still was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, desired to set me free, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything about which to accuse my nation. For this cause, therefore, I ask you to see and to speak with me. For because of the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. They said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor did any of the brothers come here and report or speak any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. For as concerning this sect, it is known to us that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed him a day, they came to him into his lodging in great number. He explained to them, testifying about the kingdom of God and persuading them concerning Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets, from morning until evening. Some believed the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. When they didn't agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had spoken one word. The Holy Spirit spoke well through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, In hearing you will hear, and will in no way understand. In seeing you will see, and will in no way perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and would turn again, and I would heal them. Be it known therefore to you, that the salvation of God is sent to the Gentiles, they will also hear. When he had said these words, the Jews departed, having a great dispute among themselves. Paul stayed two whole years in his own rented house, and received all who went in to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, without hindrance.